I started to feel like I belong. I have value here. People see me. And you're actually like present with other people where you're like looking into each other's eyes, feeling each other's emotions. It's like, whoa, that is not what is being served at the table of social media. <laughs> My name is Money, and I am a therapeutic pop artist and a creative life coach living in Los Angeles, California. And my mission is to use creativity to heal myself and others. Oh, I like that. Just hitting hard with the mission statement right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> um, Money, the last time um, I saw you, you were in my kitchen. Um, we got connected because Kieran O'Connor, one of the Braver Angels national ambassadors, um, went to college with you yeah, and linked you up with Braver Angels. And it's been really cool to hear more of your story. So um, just share more about, yeah, elaborate on that introduction a little bit, because there's a lot in sure. there. And a lot of it is not the typical, like, I'm a singer songwriter and I play ukulele and piano. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's like, I, am I wish I played trying to do this. I'm <laughs> trying to save the world and here's exactly how. So um, I have a feeling yeah. you've thought this through. Go ahead and expand. Yeah, um, it's been a long journey, kind of like shuffling these ideas of like my whole life I've known I'm an artist in some capacity, not even necessarily musically. I, I was a visual artist for a long time, um, photography, painting, all kinds of things. I've kind of worked my way through all the different artistic disciplines. Um, and I've always known I wanted to use my creativity, my intuition, my artistry in some way um, to help others. And I didn't know what that meant for a long time. I smashed them together in a bunch of different ways. Like I was working um, in the independent film business for a while. Um, I got my master's in art therapy. I thought I was gonna be an art therapist um, for the rest of my life. I thought I had really like cracked the code. Um, but then basically my own mental illness got in the way. I've struggled with depression and anxiety since I was 13. And so going through my own processes of healing and growth and personal transformation, it's been a non-negotiable for me. Um, so I've just always kind of tried to open myself up deeper, understand myself better so that I can just function really. Um, and then learning how to be an art therapist um, kind of helped me reach an additional, a deeper level of, of healing and a, a, a deeper tool set for working with other people to heal them. Um, but I burnt out at my first job. I was working at a nursing home as an art therapist in New York, and it was just, I was done with the city. I was done with that particular avenue of work. Um, and I moved to Los Angeles really just because I thought it would make me happier. I didn't have a plan. I just thought sunshine, a bigger emphasis on wellness, like more so than New York City. Um, so I moved here and I got exposed to the coaching industry, which I hadn't had any experience with, but basically through um, working for this woman who was a business coach for creative female entrepreneurs, I got to see a lot of what she did. I got to see if, how her clients worked and how she managed those relationships. And I kind of hybridized my whole skill set of working through things with myself, using art and self-expression to do that, to, to move things around, to shift things, to gain perspective, to put pieces together and develop my own life coaching practice. So I've been doing that for four years now, um, mostly working with individuals, but I also work with some uh, family units, couples, and really just helping them um, communicate better, find more harmony within themselves and each other and da, 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 da. And through doing that work of like self-empowerment with other people, I recognized that I had this deeply buried desire to sing and make music that was kind of like mocked and ignored and rejected out of me when I was really young. And I was like, well, I coach other people to do the things that they're the most scared of all the time now. So like, I can't run from this anymore. So um, I kind of just took an Uber driver up on a 
offer to come over for a songwriting session or a, like a you know production session at his home studio and yeah what was going to become elemental my first ep just kind of started coming out of those sessions um and then um yeah three years later it's a thing it's a <laughs> living entity um it's a visual ep and i um am shuffling around again ways of how i want to use my voice how i want to use music how i want to heal and work with people um and i'm uncovering new abilities of what that means i've started to work with people like energetically and in their bodies and like I'm just getting to know myself like on this extremely deep level and that's helping me bring new things to the work that I do with other people to help them live more harmoniously with themselves. So when I hear that story um, and there's so much there, holy cow yeah. <laughs> and congratulations <laughs> on all of the above. Um, I, uh, the word holistic comes to mind because it seems like you view music as one of the many pieces of what you call wellness. Um, and e even earlier, before we started recording, you use the word arm, like music being one arm of that. And so there's this whole entire being that is you, or that is any given person. And you, you do this and you do that and you do the other thing and they're all interconnected in some way. Have you always viewed it that way? Um, or is that something that kind of started emerging as all of these wires were crossing and, and inter intermingling and untangling and so forth. Yeah, definitely the intermingling and the untangling and the discovering along the way. Um, I mean, when I was learning to be an art therapist, you know, it was like, here's your one toolkit. It's visual arts. And uh, I felt very, like I, I was amazed by what that all entailed and how I learned how to use different mediums with different people dealing with different things and give them different sets of directions to kind of create this very specific container for them. Um, and that was incredible. I mean, that, that education was just unbelievable um, and opened my eyes to so much. But then I had to kind of unlearn it because it ended up being more rigid than what I really wanted to do when it came time to actually meet someone in the moment of a session. I mean, now I use dance, I use music, I use breathing, I use visualizing, I use meditating. It's, I, I use my whole body, my whole self, my whole intuition to figure out with that other person and everything they're bringing, like what's gonna help them flow and see themselves differently and find different edges and kind of, shift their perspective so the holistic thing has really been like kind of getting back to something essential um after you kind of learn all like how to use these different arms then eventually you're kind of like working them together into one like cohesive machine i almost hate to use the word machine because it's so much more human than that but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, you learn how to like pull the lever of like, okay, how do I use poetry? Okay, how do I right. use this? But, it, but you said you said something yeah. a moment ago that almost made it seem like the integrated state was our default. And you're like unlearning the com compartmentalization. You're nodding right now. So I assume you agree. Yes, with that. <laughs> yes absolutely. Like, I think so many of the processes that I've undergone, like going through the film industry, going through the music industry, going through being an art therapist, it's like, you're discovering new facets of your own like humanity and your own human nature and it's like how do you uh pull out the kind of thorns and programs that got embedded into you at like young ages formative ages even adulthood but you know a lot of people it's like we're when we're grappling with how do we want to move forward as adults and make decisions that uh, fit for us, we have to go back to those pieces of our history where things got stuck, um, things got wounded. You know, we're dealing with our 16 year old self, we're dealing with our three year old self, we're dealing with our five year old self, and those pieces of them that got kind of like fragmented and pushed off. And we have to like 
welcome them all back in with open arms and love and kindness. And um, that's how we move forward as a holistically integrated human. And that ties in really well to your artist's name which yes. uh, tell us the story of that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I go by the name money, which is, um, my toddlerhood nickname that my whole family called me when I was really young. Um, it came out of before I could say Morgan, which was my first name. Um, and that was like money, just like she knew what she wanted, you know, like she wanted to sing and she was kind of in encouraged to be a performer at an early age. Um, my parents, like I had my, my mom had this, like, you know, the nineties, like that big giant video camera where you put the whole VHS Oh my gosh. I have one of yeah. those. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So there's just like so much footage of me as a kid, like I'm trying to get me to perform and say stuff and do stuff and sing and dance. And then at around age like five, I think they just decided it wasn't cute anymore and it kind of like got shut down. And so that part of me, like that I've associated with money um, and my desire to sing specifically, kind of just, I tamped down on it and then it became something I did like in secret and private in the shower, in the car. And I just like would use my voice as a as a tool for healing you know in a way that i didn't really understand at the time but it was like a way to scream and just sound good instead of you know not being allowed to be angry or sad or um you know whatever uh so i kind of put money away and i went by morgan for most of my life until only a couple like so when i started my um my artist journey, I was, I named myself money because I was reclaiming that part of myself, that, that, um, little girl that like just loved to sing. And I wanted to kind of like lift her up and integrate her into back, back into who I am. Um, because she was so wounded and sad. And it was such a part of this like depression that I was struggling with was just not being seen and feeling isolated and like I had to hide uh this this true version of myself in order to be loved um and so welcoming her back in with love going with that as my artist name and then also recently in my regular waking life I've started to um introduce myself as money and go by that again so it's this like full circle coming back to myself in practice. I love it. So if I'm a potential life coaching client and I, mm -hmm. and I'm like, hi money, can I sign up for life coaching? Yeah. What, what is the process? You mentioned that you're super multimedia, uh, which even that word sounds very, um, mechanical and yeah. <laughs> not as holistic and human <laughs> multimedia. Um, it sounds industrial. Yeah. Um, you're, you use a lot of, uh, tools. Yeah. <laughs> I, I use a lot of tools, a lot of colors in your, your, I, well, how can we yeah. say this in a, like a more human way? I don't even know. You know, it's funny. People love talking about tools. People come to me and I want tools. I want this. I want that. And I say, yes, yes, yes. And I have these tools and I can talk about them, but really the essence of what people want and need is someone to listen to them, someone to care, someone to show them different aspects of themselves, someone to really notice the nuances of their expression and, and who they are and how they are and show that back to them and empower them to create and then take steps towards that optimized also very mechanical word <laughs> version of themselves. Um, it's so the tools, the tools are important, but it's almost like, I don't know, was it Picasso or somebody that was like, you have to learn the rules to break them where it's like, yeah, the tools are important and they sit in the tool belt, but like the real work is like me sitting here with you spending my time getting to know you and in just doing that in building that relationship echoing a sense of like 
deep care and worthiness back to that person because so many people's fundamental wounds come back to like a feeling of unworthiness um fear and to just have someone show up in a way that's like i believe in you you can be that fearless person that's more important than any like tool you know it kind of reminds me of how people discuss like dieting um, and, and nutrients and like, here, here's your carbs, here's, here's your macros, your proteins, your fat, all of that. Yeah, um, yeah. and there was, I don't, I think this was like an NPR piece from like 15 years ago when, oh, was it Maya Angelou? I don't remember when she passed. So maybe this was somebody else, but I, th- I think Maya Angelou had a cookbook or has a cookbook. And, um, she, she was explaining her philosophy on eating and how people talk about like, I'm trying to eat so many carbs. I'm trying to eat this much fat. And she's like, no, 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 you don't eat carbs and you don't, you don't eat protein. You don't eat fat. You eat meals, you eat bread, you eat meat, you eat these things that are actually, um, uh, more real in some sense and more, more spiritual in another sense, because when you compartmentalize all the elements of things without seeing them as a whole, you lose sight of the mm-hmm. entire reason we're eating food in the first place, which is community and, and wellness and like true, true wellness, not just like dietary perfection. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And I think that's such a good bridge with the eating because like, I'm also teaching people how to listen to their bodies and how to like unlock the compass they already have inside of them that has all the answers for them. Um, And I think that's a way of eating too, is once you kind of see bad habits that you've learned with eating for what they are, like maybe you turn to sugar as a comfort or you, it's some guaranteed way of, of getting a feeling of sweetness or energy like and you start to see like okay well what does my body actually like want and need if you can see past some of that like programming that somehow got embedded in there in the middle of like our emotional associations with food um your your body wants to eat like whole unprocessed foods and that's what really like nourishes it but so much of our culture is around like cheap calories and quick fixes and this and that and like if we're really in touch with our body and we know exactly how it feels to sit in our skin and feel our stomach feel our mind racing slow those things down get really deeply in touch with ourselves, we can access an, a, a, a more natural intelligence about like what we should be putting in our bodies. It's, it's not the same for every person, but it's kind of the same road, every person getting back to themselves in a way. Mm. Are these themes that people would be able to detect if they listen to your your new AP or to see some of the visual art you make or some of this, uh, the other yeah. quote unquote multimedia yeah. <laughs> stuff that you do. <laughs> um, is, are these embodied in that? I would say yes. Um, at least a slice of it is because I have now, of course, having made this project, I have a million other ideas about where I want to go next and the other things I want to explore. But um, this project is called Elemental and it is using the four elements of nature, fire, water, earth, and air, to tell a very human story. I mean, we're we're nature too, but um, to tell a story about emotions. Um, And it's, it's, so it's using nature as a vehicle. I mean, all the videos are shot in, well, most of them are natural settings. I can only think of like one scene, even out of all the four videos that isn't just naturally lit. So, you know, a lot of that is kind of baked in this like simplistic, unfiltered, natural, raw experience. Like that is what I tried to create in this Um, and to really distill down my my journey with these themes. Um, the, The story is specifically about overcoming a toxic relationship going through emotions of grief and sadness. The story um, of the entire EP. 
the story of the entire EP. Okay. Yeah. Um, leaving behind a toxic relationship, going through the sadness of mourning it, recognizing through connecting to your own deep emotions that you have this immense power inside of you and you don't need anybody. And actually there's this tremendous freedom in knowing that you have everything you need contained in yourself. That's the full arc, fire, water, earth, air. Which is your favorite of the four? Or which, which, it is air. Tell me me more about (laughs) air. (laughs) Oh my God, I'm blushing. Um, Yeah, so air was actually the very first song I ever wrote. I, it was the product of like the first session with that Uber driver. Um, I didn't know what it was yet. It just came out of me. Like we started kind of creating a sound palette and then I was, I remember sitting there just staring at a blank piece of paper, listening to what he was creating and kind of being like, all right, don't, don't fuck this up. <laughs> like do make something good, you know, like sitting there like a blank. And then it was like, it just kind of came out of me. The, the chorus just kind of came out of me, the melody and the lyrics. Um, And I didn't know what it was yet. It wasn't called air at the time. We didn't, there was no title. It was just a song, Um, but it took shape. And then the next time we wrote fire and then, 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 then I started to understand like, oh, this has the architecture of potentially this larger concept. Um, But so the way that air came out of me was so airy, like every element came out in such a way that was so like, just, of itself that's a weird way to say it but like every element of the creative process reflected the nature of that element that it was about Um, fire was intense and contentious there was a lot of interpersonal conflict behind the scenes Um, and air was like light and airy and it just came out of me and because singing and making music was something that I had buried so deep in me and took so long to kind of free. Um, I actually had a panic attack on the freeway on the way home after that first writing session with air when it came out, I had to pull over and I was just like, you know, hyperventilating, uh, freaking out. I was having rushing thoughts of suicide and, you know, I had to pull over and collect myself. And in retrospect, I was like, whoa, I like exorcised something from my lungs, like writing that song, like I could breathe again in a way because I had somehow given myself the right container for this to come out. And that song um, being about freeing yourself and reaching that internal liberation. I mean, and it's just such, like, yeah, it, it just gets me there every time, like emotionally, it just takes me right to that, that, as I say in the song, like bitter sweetness of you're leaving something behind and there's a sadness to that, but there's also this tremendous like power and beauty to recognizing yourself as the agent of your own happiness and freedom. Mm. (laughs) If that gave you an idea, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I could see how air would be your favorite. And when when it's got so much, um, like such a symbolic experience woven into it. Um, As you were talking, I was thinking, (laughs) I was thinking to myself, I'm I'm so cynical, uh, money. You have uh-huh. to forgive me. I'm just like, oh, she has no idea that the artistic process is nothing like this most of the time. <laughs> right. Um, and that's not to say that it won't be for you. Like maybe you're the the magic person for whom it is. But I thought I thought a little bit too about like some analogies here to bridge building work because oft- sometimes there are these like magical moments where you actually can see. Um, see the bridge that you're building like so clearly. And there's this, this fellowship and this, um, 
uh, togetherness that you see maybe after Brave Angels workshop or after some particular one-on-one -on -one, um, that we we might host as an organization. But then there, there's another phase of bridge building work, which, which is the slow, diligent slog behind the scenes of, of working on yourself oh, yeah. every single day and trying to take deep breaths and see the other as human. And um, uh, I, I'm not I didn't purposely try to make that analogy. It might, it might seem like a little bit of a reach, but I, yeah. uh, I don't know. It, art, artistry is, is magical and it's also discipline. And so I just find myself wondering what it's going to look like for you um, as you start to unfold a new face of yourself creatively and, and see like how future songs get written and what the stories are behind each one. Yeah. Oh my, I mean, Alma, fast forward three years of nothing else that felt like that. <laughs> I could have quit after writing that song. I really, I felt after I wrote that song, oh, I could die now because I never thought I would achieve this dream. You wrote Air three years ago? Yeah, it, it was May 2019. Oh my gosh. Okay, I didn't realize that it was so long ago. So you do know, you know all about this. Oh my God, I'm on the other <laughs> side of feeling like, fuck this. I'm not, I don't know. Oh I don't even know gosh. if I ever want to do that again. Like it felt like, okay, I had this, woohoo breath of fresh air of like air and then fire and then which I was real it's not element. imaginary it's real completely and then I spent the next three years a slave to that project mm -hmm. and so air was the last song on the EP um even though it was the first song I wrote and so it's the 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 end of that journey the end of that cycle um, but it is intentionally a cycle because you just go around and around and around and around through all these different elements and you you touch on those emotions at different phases of your life and different things in different ways. And like, so I was making the music and, you know, that was a total slog and working with people was very frustrating for me mm -hmm. and I really struggled with it. It was tremendously emotional. And then it came time to make all the videos and that was its whole other next thing. And I'm still, I was still living what I was, what I had sung about in the process of making those videos. I was in a relationship um, with the guy who was in the fire video. And then by the time air came around, that was when we broke up. Mm. And I had written air about a different toxic relationship that I had been in, you know, th three years before. <laughs> so, so emotionally, psychologically, the slog, and then, yeah, the actual creative process was a total slog. Um, and I really realized through the process of releasing it, especially like, wow, what it takes to do this, especially as an independent artist. I mean, it's just, and I was, by the time I was releasing it, I was like, I just gone through this breakup. I also had to end my relationship with my manager, which was toxic. I was on my own and it fucking sucked i didn't ask if i could curse but i am um <laughs> should i keep it to a minimum <laughs> you're good <laughs> um, so um the release phase was uh from march of this year through um through may and i did my the release show and the full release of the full all the videos and everything at the end of may by the time i got there I'm exhausted with this project. I'm dead on the inside. I want nothing to do with this stuff, um, which is so sad because, you know, I'm editing the video for air and there are moments of creative excitement about it, putting these pieces together. But it's like I'm editing this footage of myself scampering around all by myself. I was supposed to, the guy in fire was going to be in air, but our relationship came to a head right there because of that. So then it was just me on the shoot. I had to rush to find a friend to replace him, um, like a, in a PA role. And I'm editing this footage and it's tremendously bittersweet to be like, I'm here on, this is me alone processing the end of this relationship and I'm editing it. It's, it's so like literal and intertwined and weird and bizarre. And I'm just like, I'm crying a lot. And I'm like, this release phase doesn't feel anything like what I, expected it to feel like going through this three-year process. I thought this was going to be a celebration of all this hard work that I put in, but really it was like a letting go of that part of me that wanted this so bad. And at, on the other side of it, you know, it was this tremendous undertaking and I'm, I'm really proud of myself 
for going through it, but it's really brought into question what I, what do I even want to do next? I want to do something that feels alive to me. Um, when I did my release show, I felt so imprisoned by the structure of these songs. And it's like, I don't know if I want to slave away at trying to crack into the music industry to sing the same songs over and over and do all this self-promotion that I, it just kills my soul. <laughs> Talk to me about the self-promotion aspects of it, because I have a feeling oh, that Lord. you have strong thoughts on, on social media and on I this do. whole ecosystem of I do me, 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 look at me. I just deleted my Facebook or, well, I submitted a request for my Facebook to be deleted uh, last week. Yeah. It's that's hard not to do, like, it's hard to find. It's not like a sinister sounding at all. Like I, oh my God. I submitted a request to delete my own thing. I was, I'm telling you, I was in a total like paranoid uproar. I was like, Facebook is like one cosmic second from owning my name and likeness. And we're not able to take it off because they're profiting off of our relationships that they're also extracting all of the value and the juiciness out of. Mm -hmm. I was, oh my God, Alma, I was on a tear and I was freaking out because I was like, I kept Googling, like, how do I delete my Facebook? And yeah. it just, you click on like a support article and it just leads you in loops. I know. Clicking on support links articles to do it. Articles are something else. It doesn't take you to a page where you can just easily delete your Facebook. They don't want you to delete it. They don't want you to change your name. They want you to be there and searchable. So your friends think that they're you're there and they think they have a relationship with you and you go to Facebook for these relationships and so that they can sell you shit. It is a death trap. <laughs> There's a lot of life on social media too, I think. There is, there is. There's so much life. I mean, think of the opportunities that weren't there for independent artists, for example, years ago. Um, and say what we will about how soul-sucking it is. And I, I, I certainly understand that as someone who deleted my Instagram for the last two years. Um, I recently got back, although I haven't done anything yet. I'm just kind of lying low. Um, yeah. I, I still see it as like a really beautiful thing at the same time. And I, and I try to like keep a level head about it, but everything you're saying is completely correct. <laughs> and I, I don't have that noble aspiration of being level-headed. I like to be extreme and just like, well, I'm also very things. capitalistic. So I'm just like, Oh, the market, like, I know the market must take care of this. Let me just like find a way to like pretend that it will, or hope that it will somehow. Yeah. I, I don't have that faith. I wish I did. I don't have that faith, but, but I do still have my Instagram. So there we are on the opposite side of that, because for me, Facebook is connecting me to a host of relationships that I'm not particularly engaged in, but Instagram, I'm still like collecting people like that. It's still useful to people that I like regularly interact with. And I'm, I haven't posted anything like since I was promoting the release because I was so exhausted by the end of that to go back to your question. Like I was trying to post every day and just this constant, like trying to make noise about this thing that I wanted people to, to listen noise. to. Yeah. And I just, it felt wrong while I was doing it. Like there were moments where I felt creatively inspired and I was like, ooh, I wanna like say this thing or I wanna share this piece of myself or I cut together this interesting clip of the music video and I'll share that. And I got a lot of amazing feedback and validation and support. And so there are like these little moments, these little gems these little sparks, but to me, it was in this sea of, I feel numb and dead and in pain, trying so hard to like make people care about this thing that I'm doing by making noise on this platform that is a gazillion other people trying to make noise about things. And ultimately when I pick it up and I, go on Instagram for some specific purpose, I get lost in a sea of noise. And that doesn't feel good in my body. So I was really deeply questioning, like, I'm trying to use this as a tool for myself, but I don't even believe in the mechanism. I don't, I don't think I want to be part of this noisy machine. I don't want to be something that's distracting someone else from living their life and adding like, 
adding an accumulation of noise in their life. Um, I mean, it, it, it like it, it just like kind of breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. I think that you're not alone in that. It's, um, I know some really beautiful, soft hearted people in particular for whom it's just <laughs> soul sucking is like a, a, like a mild word for what it feels like, because when you're a creative person and you, you feed off of the, the beautiful chaos of making stuff and, and just the raw energy of, of coming up with an idea with the Uber driver you just met, <laughs> there's, there's nothing quite so different from that as as logging on to this app where you just scroll and scroll and scroll and you're trying to outperform yeah. the other people. You're trying to look hotter than them. You're trying to like play the game and the game playing thing. Like, I don't think that comes super naturally to a lot of artists and, and it's tough, but you feel like you can't quit. You feel like you feel like you yeah. need to have an Instagram. I mean, I've been told by so many people I need to get back on there because, because of my quote unquote music career. And I'm like, I don't know. I got like four festival invitations this summer without having an Instagram. <laughs> so maybe Maybe I'm doing something okay, like regardless, but yeah, like what you're saying, the, the feeling of, I can't get off of this because what if I'm missing X, Y, or Z? Um, to me, I was like, wait a minute, that in itself is not a good enough reason to be here. And then when, but, but you kind of hold on to it for a little while. It, and then recently I've had the beautiful beautiful blessing i mean like i'm like gonna try not to cry here of finding amazing community in la um song circles ecstatic dance um other groups where it exists entirely not on social media there's like a whatsapp group you know and people meet every Monday or every Thursday or whatever. Um, I have an emotional processing group that I go to that a friend started. And once I got into those communities and started to feel like I belong, I have value here, people see me, I could let go more easily of social media because it was so clearly not that it, it it's like the cheap calories we were talking about earlier it i kept eating and eating and going to social media out of anxious impulses out of habit a lot of the same reasons we emotionally eat cheap calories like sugar and chips and whatever it is and it just like it fills you like it distends your stomach, but it doesn't nourish you. And then when you eat real food, quote unquote, or you like feel like you're a part of a community and you're actually like present with other people where you're like looking into each other's eyes, you're feeling each other's emotions, they see you, you see them, you feel valued, you feel like you belong. It's like, whoa, that is not what is being served at the table of social media. 1000%. Uh, we yeah. had a, we had a Brave Angels uh, music event in Kenosha a couple weeks ago. And um, there was, there was one evening where I must have misplaced my phone for like eight hours or so. Like I'd, I'd lost my phone eight hours ago, but I didn't notice it until like later the, after the eight hours, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I was so delighted to realize I hadn't like thought about it once <laughs> because I was dealing with real people face to face and like genuinely enjoying it and, and being nourished by that such that I didn't, I didn't need the click of the little dopamine hit. It's yeah. nothing compared to the real thing. And that's part of why I yeah. moved out of LA myself was I didn't find the kind of beautiful community you're, you're describing me. I didn't seek it out. So that certainly is true. I, I didn't seek it out. But, um, but yeah, every time I would come back to North Dakota, I would experience what you're describing and just be like, I never want to leave. <laughs> yeah. This is home. Um, you mentioned yeah. the word belonging and that made me think, um, quite a bit. I, I feel like <laughs> belonging is kind of a, a dub double-edged sword in a sense, uh, when it comes to the political divide that Brave Angels mm. is seeking to, um, 
be a salve for, because on the one hand, belonging to one another is the thing that causes us to, to see the humanity in our brothers and, and, and wait a beat before excommunicating somebody <laughs> from, from, um, uh, yeah, from our sense of what is, uh, within the pale that's not a phrase that people say not beyond the pale for uh, for cascading somebody um but on the other hand belonging is also this um amazing force uh that like is a steam engine of tribalism you could say because when it's you mm. and me and we belong to each other over here well him and and her and and them they they, they don't belong to us so we're not even going to we're not going to humanize them at all. We're going to call them names. Mm. We're going to fight them on social media. We're going to all the stuff that we see in today's um, toxic political environment. And so I wonder what your thoughts are on that. I mean, I imagine you'll, you'll draw from your therapy background a little bit here too, because there's a lot of uh, emotions we bring to the table when those topics come up. Um, Actually, I'm going to draw from like what I'm experiencing now, which is the most healed version of myself that I've ever been, and therefore the most loving and compassionate version of myself that I've ever been. And the more that we go in ourselves and learn how to heal ourselves and love ourselves. And like I said, pick up all those lost fragmented pieces of ourselves at different ages where we were chastised, ignored, rejected, whatever, bullied, all these things. The more that we can welcome ourselves home within our own bodies and um, really confront the pain of that, confront the pain in us. The more that we have patience and love and kindness for people who are confronting their own pain that's then getting externalized. Um, I have a really hard time with conflict um, and anger. Um, and I, it's hard for me to stomach, but the more that I've as I said, gone inward and like found the roots of those things in myself, moved through them, cried through them, kicked and screamed through them, danced through them, sung through them, the more space there is. And if I can hold space inside of myself, I can hold space for someone else who's flailing around with whatever they're flailing around with. And I, do still struggle with viewpoints that are very different from mine. It is hard to welcome that in with love. But the more I feel that I belong and am seen and my basic needs are met and I have a place in the world and people who love me and I love me, I can offer that to them. So, I think that answers the question. It's not an us them thing, you know? It's like, if I if my needs are met, then I don't need to take anything away from other people yeah. or, or argue with them. I can just hug them. And I know I also know how extremely oversimplified that is. Um, but yeah, that operating from a place of abundance goes a really long way. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. It is oversimplified on the one hand. <laughs> But there's also like nothing more true on the other. And I, I run into this all the time. I yes. mean, the second on social media, like on Twitter or something like if you if you say anything that's remotely um, promoting bridge building work, you inevitably, you inevitably get the people who say, oh, you're, you're so naive. Um, and also like you are part of the problem even because you are enabling these people who believe all these horrible things. Mm. It's, you know, what's really funny about Brave Angels is we get so many emails from people who think that we're one-sided 
but we get the emails mm. from both sides, <laughs> like constantly, <laughs> like the same newsletter could go out. And one person's like, oh, like how dare, like I feel as a red, I don't feel like I'm welcome anymore. And the same, like this, this chick over here, the same newsletter provokes yeah. a response that says, yeah. oh, I'm a blue. And I feel like you've just totally lost the plot and you've gone totally red. And I'm like, oh, I feel like that probably means we're doing something right um, mm. at the end of the day. Mm. But, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what more, I don't know what else there is. I, I don't know how you solve problems at scale, except by doing your best on the very minimal one-on-one -on -one level that we have in real yes. life. Yes. And what you're speaking to now is kind of what I'm dealing with as far as where do I want to go with music next? Because the types of experiences that I want to provide for people, I don't know if you can scale them because I do think that the container of one-to-one -one interaction and, and real felt embodied intimacy with another human being, I don't think you can scale it inherently. Um, do you know who Ben yeah. Karen is? No, tell me. Okay. So Ben Karen was our very, very first artist of the month. Okay. He is an LA local and uh, currently he is on the road with a group called the caravan that he founded and the caravan goes around the United States in an RV doing service projects, doing music performances, like the one we did in Kenosha with workshops. Um, they, they use a tool called the human library, which is kind of brave angels adjacent where you can check out a, a, a human <laughs> for a half hour, an hour and hear their life story here, ask them any wow. questions. So maybe one person is, is <laughs> my friend, um, Dennis or, uh, Ben's companion uh, in the caravan cohort, Dennis, walks into the kitchen one morning in Kenosha and he's like, well, I'm, an, I'm the gay book today because <laughs> he's a gay man. And so like his thing that day was, like, but like on, on another day, he might not be the gay book. He might be uh, the nomad book or something like that where people can um, interrogate that aspect of their personality and just expand their own um, horizon of, of what yeah. it means to be a person of whatever identity that it, they are, but yeah. they're very, very holistic, very multimedia. Um, and I'm not just saying this to brag on my, my past artist of the month and promote that conversation with him. But like, I feel like you two would actually jive so well, and you would even be like a fantastic like caravan it. member. And you could you literally yeah. this summer, if you wanted to jump on the caravan before it was time's up, it's kind of a rotating door. So people come and they go, whoever is available. Um, wow. And yeah, I might. Uh, <laughs> yeah, connect us. That'd be great. Yeah, I'll connect you. Because I think that would be very yeah. much the kind of like soul enriching nourishing experience that that you're alluding to but tell me more yeah. about what's next for you and what specifically yeah. you're envisioning as so i just <laughs> i just painted the picture of ben's vision but what's like yeah. the money the money vision of of the world and so i think the the truest answer is i don't know but what i'm trying <laughs> what i'm trying next <laughs> um so i tried to i tried to like weave in um a lot of like participatory elements to my elemental EP release show. But like I said, even still, that still felt too much like I was adhering to the structure of these songs that I wrote that are done. They're not in the moment anymore. Um, and I'm more interested in how can I use my voice, my body, my whole presence to do something with the energy of the individuals that are there. Um, this is borrowing from my art therapy background. This is borrowing from the life coaching. This is borrowing from this new nifty skill of like energy healing that I'm kind of playing with. Um, and so I'm doing this thing called a flow um, this is the first show I've performed in this style. Um, tomorrow is actually the, the pilot um, where I'm going to have about 30 people in my apartment and uh, I'm going to have a couple of musicians accompanying me um, and I'm going to invite each individual audience member uh, sort of into the middle of the circle. Uh, for my EP release show, there was no stage. We all circled around this table with a bowl on it um yeah <laughs> oh, that's a story for another day
But um, so I'm going to invite people up. And uh, the theme is I'm perfect, imperfect. It's spelled like I am in parentheses, perfect. So it's kind of both. It's I'm perfect and I'm imperfect. Um, and I'm going to invite them to share an imperfection that they perceive about themselves and just kind of introduce themselves a little bit. And then I'm going to kind of tune in to them, their energy. Um, I've, I've done this a little like bits and pieces with people and I kind of usually touch them in some way, like feel their heartbeat or put my hand on their shoulder, kind of close my eyes and just feel their presence and then start to vocalize uh, whatever, like use my voice as a channel to transmit their frequency, let's say. Um, I'm, Cause I'm still don't really know how to explain it cause I've only just started doing it. Um, and then the band will kind of come in to amplify that. I'm also inviting the audience to bring instruments so that, and to use their voices so that basically as a whole room, we're going to reflect and emit the frequency of this individual, which will shift and change as the sound, like, you know, the, the music will also influence them in the moment. So the idea is basically to do these like individual improvised songs that connect everyone and move and heal the energy of that individual person. I cannot imagine how, um, how that would feel to be the person who is in the middle. I it's did like it. Terrifying. Yeah. It, you did it. You were in the middle once. How did that? Oh, feel? no, no, I didn't. Oh. I, I didn't do it. I, that's oh, okay. yeah, I did it with someone else. Like I've, I've done it with individual people okay. like here and there, and they're all kind of like, that why Whoa. not like the, exactly that look is what is in my heart right now as I even think about it it's so, so you're, scary you're fear, it feels scary it's like scary but also I don't know yeah it's like not a kind of attention that would like naturally I would seek out um yeah. but it's also like the most seen that you've probably ever felt when you're in that moment and there's something really special about that yeah Holy yeah God. so for you the fear would initially be a part of that and the way that I would like sense you and interact with you and touch you would be both a reflection of that and sort of a transmutation of that, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. we would kind of deal with that fear and sublimate, sublimate it into something else. That's so interesting. I've never heard of anything like that. Awesome. Um, but but Ben Karen would love it. So when I connect to you, you're gonna have to share that idea with him. And he's gonna be like, money, get on the caravan right now. <laughs> yeah. I want to try yeah. this out on everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So if it if it's like a wild success tomorrow at the show, yeah. what are you gonna do? Are you gonna like make this a monthly like Dude, do you have I dreams? Know. I don't know. I don't know. I because I've been so like in recovery mode from releasing this last project honestly that's been my focus is like don't jump in full force on your next idea don't make your whole life about it and like exhaust yourself and burn out um i think at the moment it'll be like all right see how people feel about it see how it feels for me because the other aspect of the the other chapter of my the elemental chapter of my music endeavor was like oh my God, this equation does not work for me at all. The input is tremendous and the output is <clears throat> so <laughs> like, I've got to see how it feels for me, see how it feels for other people. I do think that people will really like it and it will be unique. Um, and then I will just kind of do it in bits of pieces, bits and pieces in my life. Um, and if the universe wants to send me people to make it happen at a bigger scale or uh, more frequently, it will. But otherwise, I'm focused on taking care of me. I might be moving, as I told you, um, out of LA somewhere where I can live more in harmony with nature. Because as I'm healing myself, again, as I'm uncovering all this stuff, I'm I'm wanting to live in more harmony. So I'm like, you know what? Like, I gotta take care of myself. I gotta practice what I preach. Like, I'm a life coach. I can't just like 
dick around and talk about a bunch of shit and not do any of it. So. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there is a stereotype out there actually with yeah, therapists, is. but I, I don't, I'm not worried about you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you are just one big walking deep breath. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> and I Thank know you. that you are like, so you're going to reach whatever wellness you're pursuing. I'm really excited for that. I wanted to say one more thing, actually, to yeah. encourage you. You mentioned the inputs and outputs of making music um, not being equivalent um, mm -hmm. or proportional. And I, I want to say, first, I relate to that. I think that's a really valid feeling. And that might be true for your own energy levels from the creation to the release. But um, your music is eternal and not that it always has to be eternally out there because you might wake up one day and say, I don't want this on Spotify anymore. And that's okay. Maybe that maybe it's not meant forever, but there are people who will hear it. Um, strangers that you've never met across the world who will inevitably hear it and they will be touched by it. And that's, that's an output. So even though it may not seem like the inputs and outputs are, are evenly matched, um, the output is not done it's kind of a fountain and it might trickle yeah. at sometimes it might gush at other times but like it's not done yeah oh you're totally right and i i wrote those songs with the intention of like honoring the elements of nature and making it timeless and not it only is relevant in 2020 or whatever you know um and you know i'd be lying if i said i didn't have ideas about other future recorded music projects that i want to do um, but I've got to honor this necessary rest that I'm, mm -hmm. yeah, working on cultivating. It's hard. It's hard to rest in this culture. It is hard so. to rest. It's one of the 10 commandments and <laughs> none of the other 10 commandments are that easy to follow. So I don't know why we would think rest is always so natural too. We really have to, <laughs> to rein ourselves in since the dawn of time, people have been, um, rebelling against it. I hope that people check out your EP and especially check out the videos because they're gorgeous. They're so stunning. I would never Thank look you. at these videos and be like, this is someone's debut project. I'd be like, oh, this is someone who's like seasoned and has an eye for this stuff and, and knows how to create uh, really remarkable visuals Thank um, you. in a beautiful package that might have taken Thank a lot of so inputs. <laughs> Um, but tell us where we can find you and, um, particularly for people who might want to follow the events that you're putting on or, or yeah. learn about what you're doing next as you pursue this journey of wellness, where can people find you? Yeah. So whether I like it or not, um, the best way to find me is I'm at I am money, I A M M U U N I E on Instagram. Um, my website is I am money.com. My email is hello at iammoney.com. Those are all great ways to find me. Um, and you get all the links to the YouTube, the Spotify. You can just Google money, M-U-U-N-I-E. Not a lot of other monies running around. <laughs> oh, there aren't. <laughs> no, there aren't. There are a couple. There are a couple. I couldn't get, I couldn't get just at money on Instagram. So there's at least one. <laughs> We'll see how their SEO compares to yours. Yeah. In the yeah. playing of the game. In the game. Yeah, baby. I'm resting so game. I can come out big. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad sometimes for like generations following us because every handle will be taken. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. I know what you're saying. <laughs> we'll all have lived all the possible lives and there every won't be any lives life. left. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, on that happy note. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do go follow um, Money's work. Go check it out, everybody. Uh, Money, thank you so much for sharing your story uh, on Braver Angels today. Oh my God, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity. But I came up empty every time I tried to breathe. I didn't know, couldn't let it show. My pride was bruised each time you didn't let me grow. Now you're gone, it's bittersweet All alone, I'm still complete Don't hang around, don't follow me You're not my heir anymore I don't need you to believe I'm floating higher without you 